So there's this expectation whenever you are born with a chronic illness that you are just the toughest person around and that you are an absolute badass. The, the label of toughness is kind of forced on us from, from parents, from friends, from doctors, from nurses, and even from mainstream media. Because I mean, think of any commercial that you've ever watched that showed kids in a hospital and it's always calling them warriors and fighters and just talking about how tough they are. And while I don't completely disagree with that coming from someone who grew up sick what ends up happening is people just expect that from us all the time through therapy it's made me realize just how damaging that thought process actually is for kids and for people who have grown up with an illness ever since my suicide attempt a couple of years ago I've been bouncing around to therapists and psychiatrists and everything in between. Whenever you are sick and whenever you've been involved in the chronic illness community for a long time, you lose a lot of people. You know, you kind of grow up around death. You, it kind of becomes second nature to you. So you figure out a way to kind of put up a wall. So whenever you talk about these things, because unfortunately you're gonna be talking about them quite frequently, you don't really have to feel them. But recently i found a new therapist which i have mentioned a couple times in these videos and this therapist specializes in something called emdr emdr stands for eye movement desensitization and reprocessing and one of the things that has popped up for me that i never realized that i had which is kind of crazy when you think about it is the amount of medical trauma that I have been carrying around through most of my life. It's made me start realizing, and I, I knew it before, but it's really kind of put a spotlight on just how not normal growing up sick is. And so the topic of this video today is going to be about growing up chronically ill and kind of how damaging that toughness mentality can be but it's also going to be talking about emdr and therapy and just how much it's helped me kind of come to terms with things and begin to heal from these medical traumas that i've had i know there's a lot of people out there who have traumas who are struggling right now and you may have thought about therapy but it's a scary thing trust me i know taking that first step to get in contact with a therapist or even the thought of stepping in a therapist's office and that vulnerability it's real it's it's tough but what if you could find a therapist and get started on your path of healing without ever having to leave your house well the sponsor of today's video BetterHelp wants to help you BetterHelp offers licensed therapists who are trained to listen and to help you through whatever struggle that you may be going through at the moment one of my favorite parts about BetterHelp is it's completely virtual so taking that first steps a lot easier because you don't have to worry about going to a therapist's office you can talk to your therapist in a private online environment at your convenience and there is a broad range of expertise including emdr and better helps 20,000 plus therapist network that gives you access to help that may not be available in your area to make taking that first step towards your healing even more stress-free signing up is one of the most simple things you will ever do you just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs and then you get matched with the therapist in under 48 hours after that you'll schedule your secure video and phone session plus you can exchange unlimited messages and everything you share is completely confidential now you may be thinking that a telehealth virtual style of therapy just isn't going to work for you and i used to think the exact same thing but the thing is i actually enjoy the virtual visits way more now than actually going in person because i'm in my own space i'm comfortable and it is 100 stress-free i don't have to worry about leaving my house and facing the day on the those days where I'm just really down and I'm really struggling. I just sit down at my computer or plug in headphones to my phone and I can talk to my therapist and vent in the comfort of my own home. And a big thing that I have learned through going to therapy is it's not one size fits all. You might get matched up with a therapist who you don't quite vibe with, you know, maybe the connection's not there. That's another amazing part about BetterHelp is you can get matched with a new therapist 
anytime at no additional charge. I've talked about it on here a ton and I'm gonna be talking about it more in this video today, but therapy has helped me in more ways than I will ever be able to express in this video. And because I know there is someone watching this right now who is ready to start their healing and could greatly benefit from therapy, if you click the link down in the description or go to betterhelp.com forward slash Morgan Solo, you will get 10% off your first month of BetterHelp. So what are you waiting for? Join the two million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced better help therapist therapy has been a life changer for me i know it will help you as well so click the link down in the description or go to betterhelp.com forward slash morgan solo and start your healing today so like i was talking about a second ago you know i'm very good at being able to talk without really feeling the things you know i can talk without really saying anything if you kind of catch my drift the thing about emdr it pretty much puts you back into these core memories into these really hard memories that you don't want to tackle it puts you right back into that place and the only thing that you can do is face it usually you're you're, you're kind of pinpointing something at least in my case i know like these big traumas that I have that I don't want to touch that I've purposely been trying to just put on the back burner and not get around to. But the thing about EMDR is it brings other stuff to the surface, other memories and other traumas that you've been carrying around that you don't even know, you didn't even realize were there. They'll just kind of pop up. This is something else that you've kind of buried underneath these really tough things. And the thing about it is I'm not talking about the PTSD and the survivor's guilt of losing friends. I'm not talking about everything that's happened with Trikafta and after 29 years suddenly being healthy. We're not talking about any of that. This is just base layer stuff. You know, being a kid and coming to terms with processing death and processing all of these really deep emotions that most people don't start processing or even realizing until into, you know, their 20s. We start doing this growing up sick you know, from when we're like five years old. The thing is, I never looked at it as trauma or anything, you know, traumatic or bad because you grow up sick, your parents, they do the best they can to just make things bearable. And what happens a lot of times is they teach us to be tough because that's the only thing that they can really do. And this is no dig towards parents of kids with chronic illnesses at all because while there may have been some things that I kind of maybe held against my parents, some of the stuff they have done that maybe I thought that they could have done different, the older that I've gotten and, you know, having friends that I've had to watch be sick and not having any control of it, or even, you know, having girlfriends who have been sick and me not having any control and being able to help at all, I can only, I can't imagine what it's like for parents to have to go through that. So this is not a dig or any sort of thing to bash parents in the way that they kind of help their kids get through these processes at all. As most in the CF community or the chronic illness community know, we end up wearing this crowned thorn of toughness as basically like this badge of honor. But the thing is, we don't realize just how deep those thorns are digging into us because it's, it's, it's what we were taught. You know, it's how we learn to cope. We have to be strong. We have to be tough. We have to fight. But I started really opening up to my therapist about stuff that I've been through. And one of the things that kind of made them stop and made us start kind of digging in and assessing this medical trauma that I've had is I told him a story about how whenever I was younger, I had to watch. What I mean by that is if I had a procedure done where I didn't have to be put to sleep, any sort of procedure that they were doing at bedside, you know, if they were placing a pick line, an IV, cutting me open, doing anything to where I could see what they were doing, I had, I had rules. And it was basically, I would freak out if nurses or doctors tried to hold me down. So I could be as still as a corpse, no matter what they were doing to me, no matter how they were digging in, no matter what sort of pain they were causing me, I could numb myself out and I could lay there just completely still. But I had two things. One, do not hold me down. And then two, is I had to watch it happen. And so I, I think back on that now and as being a kid, you know, four or five years old, I think is when I started getting pick lines. They go into like the brachial in your arm here, just a big hollow needle. And then they take a guide wire and they shove that in there and they kind of fish it through your arm. And because the goal is to see if they can get it into the upper parts of your heart. So those harsh antibiotics don't actually touch your vein. And so 
they would be doing that and I would just watch this happen. It gave me a sense of power in a powerless situation. And so I took it as almost like a challenge to myself. You know, I would always feel like I failed myself and my parents if I cried, you know, if I made a noise, if I flinched. So I would lay there just as stiff as a corpse, almost as like, like validation it's almost like to you know my to my mom or my dad or whoever was there if i could just lay there and not make a noise not make a peep not flinch at all no matter how much pain i was going through it was like look you know look mom look dad i'm being tough you know, i'm being strong i can handle this you know it was weird i got to the point where i could just take myself somewhere else i was present and i was watching what they were doing and i was i was there but it's just I could take my physical body and my mind and it's like I could separate them. I could make them be in two different places so I didn't fully have to endure what they were putting me through. And that worked great whenever I needed it then. But what I found happening was I was doing that for different things as I got older. So I was never really feeling them. I was never really processing anything. I was using that old technique that I figured out because I had to, because it served me at the time to help me through circum certain circumstances. I was using that towards anything that came my way that I didn't want to deal with or it, was, it got too heavy for me. And you know, another thing is parents are either on one side of the fence or the other when it comes to having a kid who's sick. So you have these parents over here who completely shield their kid from everything they try to make everything sunny and rainbows and you know they don't really talk to them about the severity of what they're going through and you have the other side which are very upfront and very blunt and they let their kid know the harsh realities of it and my parents fell under that category but the thing about it is it doesn't really matter what side you're on see what i don't feel like a lot of parents realize is kids whenever they are presented with extraordinary circumstances like growing up in hospitals and growing up sick we look we start processing things very young and we start realizing things very young so you know it doesn't matter which side of the fence you are your kid knows what's going on and they are learning to process and feel these things even if you're trying to shut it out and pretend like everything is okay you know it didn't matter if my mom went and talked to a doctor out in the hallway I, from a very young age i learned how to just pick up on people's energies pick up on people's vibes and just read the room and so even if they talked even if something really serious was happening they had spoken about it outside of the room i knew it was going on it didn't matter if it was my mom, a nurse, a doctor, I could hear it in their voice. I could see it in their body language. You know, if a code blue was called over the intercom and then the next day me and my mom were taking a walk around the hallways and a room that had a kid in it the night before, if that room was now empty, I knew what that meant. I knew that they didn't make it. And you shouldn't be have you shouldn't have to deal with that and you shouldn't have to process all of that from a young age like that at like five and six years old it's it's you know that shit is not normal and we can you know we try to normalize things the best we can you know when we grow up with those circumstances it's our normal but there's no way that we can go through all of these things and have and start processing these crazy difficult emotions from such a young age and then grow up to not be a little messed up to not need some help from someone or something because the thing is we we start learning how to cope and learning how to deal with these things in our own way and we kind of start compartmentalizing things and some of our coping means while they may help us at the time they end up not being healthy as we start moving into adulthood but you know that thing of toughness that thing of you have to be strong it's hammered into our brains from parents from family from friends from doctors from nurses everywhere we look it's people telling us how strong we are how tough we are it's not even a thing of us being tough it's just whenever you're presented with those kind of circumstances you just kind of compartmentalize it and put it in a space to where you don't actively feel it anymore but the thing about it is it's always there festering 
We might not think it is. We might think that, yeah, we're super strong and this is just the hand that we were dealt and we know how to play it. We can navigate this field of being sick all that we want. And yeah, maybe we can. Maybe it seems like it on the outside, but on the inside, there's so much stuff that we carry that we don't even realize we carry because from a very young age, we're expected to carry so much. It just seems like something totally normal the thing about emdr is it takes you right back to those to those places it takes you right back to those memories things that you haven't thought about in years feelings that you didn't even know were there all these emotions it will bring them surging straight out of you and it can be overwhelming and it is emotional and it is hard but you, like i said there's nowhere to run there's nowhere to hide from it you have to face it head on and it has been so incredibly hard but so incredibly healing at the same time and i mainly just wanted to make this video to let my friends know to let other people who have grown up under extraordinary circumstances of you know being sick or maybe just enduring something from a very young age that most kids shouldn't have to endure that it's okay to not be strong it's okay to not be tough those, those labels of being strong and tough and especially if you're a guy of being manly it's all it's all bullshit it's all absolute bullshit it's okay to admit that the things that we've been through and the things that we're still actively going through absolutely suck and they were traumatic as hell and we don't have to be tough all the time and just think that because we were expected to carry such a weight from a young age that we still have to keep carrying this weight i am telling you as someone who has struggled with mental health as someone who has stacked emotion and pain and emotions and pain on top of it and put it in that space where i felt like i wasn't feeling it until eventually it got so full that the door snapped open and i put a rope around my neck because i didn't want to feel that pain anymore i'm telling you that these things will eat at you even even when you don't realize it. Parents, I'm not gonna preach to you guys. Like I said before, I can only, I can't imagine what it's like to have a kid and have to, you know, I know what it's like to be inside the hospital bed and I, I know how to deal with that. I know where to take myself to deal with those things, but to be on the outside, to have to watch your kid go through these things and you have to be completely powerless and you have to sit by and watch doctors and nurses just kind of poke and prod and mutilate and stick and cut into your baby i i will never i will never have the words and i can never imagine what that is like but i do just want to tell you as the patient as that kid that you are watching go through that i want you to i want to let you know that please i want to just ask you to please check in on your kids please I know with with kids and especially as they start turning into teenagers it's always just like oh you know I'm fine I'm fine but they're not none of none of us are who go through the things that we've been through like I said it may seem like you are it may seem like you've just gotten so accustomed and used to these circumstances that they don't affect you anymore but I'm telling you that that is not the case and it will eat them alive so I know that therapy is still kind of a taboo subject and no parent wants to actively put their kid in therapy like i know that but i'm telling you right now as a 31 year old who's about to be 32 i wish that i would have been in therapy to learn healthy coping mechanisms when it comes to dealing with everything that you know goes along with having an illness you know i feel like i wouldn't have made some of the dumb decisions or maybe wouldn't have such a weight that i've been carrying around and all of this stuff i have to get through now and that also doesn't apply to just the kids you know whoever is watching this you know if you are of age therapy i know is kind of a dirty word and it's icky and no one no one wants to go to therapy i don't want to go to therapy has is therapy amazing for me has found has me finding emdr absolutely changed my life yes but there's still that that vulnerability that place that you have to come to within yourself to be able to say i don't know how to fix this in me and i need outside help when you finally make that decision when you know that you really want to start putting in the work to make that change it's going to be the hardest thing that you've ever done but it's also going to be the most amazing thing you've ever done because you don't have to be tough all the time just because we were presented with extraordinary circumstances and 
for some reason just were, were expected to carry this. People would tell me, you know, people told me how strong I was as a kid. They've told me how strong I am now, but I wasn't strong. I'm not strong, like under the definition, under what most people think. I was just a scared kid. I was scared to die. I was scared of losing my life to this illness. I was scared of what would happen if I let my guard down and if I, if I didn't just shoulder it all. While these things may have served me then, they no longer serve me now. They no longer serve you now. But that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate y'all so much. I'll catch all of y'all on the next one. I'm Morgan. I'm out of here. Later.